Hey guys, welcome back to the Financial Freedom Channel, where we are constantly exploring how to make your money work harder for you. So today I want to share a story I first heard from Monish Pabrai about, and it relates to compound interest, compound growth of your wealth. Okay, so I'm going to share a little story first. So back in 1626, there were people living on the island of Manhattan, okay? Manhattan. Now, in 1626, the Dutch came along and they offered to purchase the island of Manhattan from the native peoples that were living there. And they offered, they offered $24, okay, to buy the island of Manhattan. Now, what we're gonna to try to figure out is was that a good deal or not, right? Was that a good deal? Now let's assume, you know, now, now the native people have this $24, right? Let's assume that they have a competent, a semi-competent investment advisor, okay? That can grow that $24 at, um, at 7%, right? They can grow it at a 7% rate of return. 7% return, okay? So what does that mean? How much is that $24 worth today if they can grow it at 7%? So here's a simple way to figure this out. It's called the rule of 72, okay? Rule of 72. The rule of 72 says, so 72 divided by your rate of return tells you the number of years it takes to double your money. Okay, that's really the key when it comes to compound growth. How many times can you double your money? Okay, so according to the rule of 72, if I'm getting a 7% rate of return, it's gonna take me you know, approximately 10 years to double my money, okay? So I'm 2Xing my money every 10 years, okay? Now, if I can double my money every 10 years, that means every 100 years, I've got 10 doubles, okay? Now, so 100 years, 10 doubles. So what is that? That's two to the power of 10, or a thousand times. So every 100 years, if I'm getting a 7% annual rate of return on my money, uh, every, every 100 years, I'm, th I'm, I'm increasing my money by a thousand times. So let's do the math here. If I start with $24, Back in 1626, okay, so we've got $24 here. Uh, by 1726, I've got 100 years. I got 1,000 times my money. So now I'm at 24,000, okay? By 1826, I'm at 24 million. This is just a 7% rate of return, guys. Over 100 years, 1,000 times my money. By 1926, I'm at 24 billion, okay? By 2026, I'm at 24 trillion, okay? Well, it's not 2026 yet, it's 2018. So for simplicity, let's, let's, let's say it's 2016, okay? So we go back 10 years, we go back one doubling. So we take half of what we, what we would have in 2026. So we're at 12 trillion as of 2016. Obviously we're gonna have a little bit more than that now because it's 2018. Um, well, let's, let's say we have 12 trillion. That's, that's a good rough estimate. So the question is, you know, if, if 
I made $24 back in 1626, and I could make 7% annual return on that, which gives me 12 trillion in 2016. Was that a good deal or not? Was it a good deal to sell the island of Manhattan for $24? Well, what's the value of the island of Manhattan today? So it's estimated the whole, the whole US, right? The real estate of the entire US is maybe somewhere in the 100 trillion ballpark, okay? So, you know, there's no way the island of Manhattan is worth 12 trillion. There's no way it's worth an eighth of all the real estate in the US. So, you know, you look at this 24, you think, oh man, they got ripped off. Well, they actually didn't get ripped off. What happened is they didn't have a competent investment advisor. You know, they couldn't make this 7% rate of return. You know, I doubt they have, I doubt they have 12 trillion sitting in the bank right now from that original $24. So, <clears throat> I mean, this is, this is the power of compounding. This is how Warren Buffett became so rich. At a very early age, he understood the power of doubling his money. Now, Buffett, you know, he, he grew his wealth somewhere around 25 to 30% per year from when he started investing, okay? 25 to 30%. So that's, you know, approximately every, every three years, okay, he's doubling his money. Warren Buffett, three years. That would be like a 24, 26% rate of return. According to the rule of 72, it's 24, but it's actually closer to 26%. So every three years, you know, he's doubling his money. So let's, you know, let's say he started with 100,000, right? Say he started with 100,000 and he's doubling every three years. So after, after 10 doublings, you know, that's 30 years later, 10 doubles, that's a thousand times. So this means if he started with 100,000, after 30 years, if he's doubling every three years, like a 26% rate of return, now he's got a thousand times that. So he's got a hundred million, okay, after 30 years. Of course, he's been doing this a lot longer than 30 years, which is why he's got a heck of a lot more than a hundred million. Um, but this is so important to understand uh, for, for you guys looking to invest, if you're looking to create financial freedom in your lives, this you know, eighth wonder of the world, according to Einstein, um, it's just, it's so powerful. You know, starting out, so I mean, if you, if you have a long enough runway here, obviously, I mean, you're looking at 1626, this runway is almost 400 years, 390 years. At a 7% rate of return, you can turn $24 into $12 trillion, okay? So really, the, the, there's, there's a couple, there's three different variables here. There's starting capital, okay? There's starting capital. There's um, rate of return. And there's runway, which is time, okay? Obviously, the more you start with, you know, if you start with 100,000 and you double it 10 times, you know, you're going to have 100 million. If you only start with 1,000 and you double it 10 times, you know, you're going to have 1 million. So obviously, the starting capital makes a huge difference, right? Uh, rate of return. You know, if you're looking at 7%, you're going to double your money every 10 years. If you do what Buffett was doing, 
at around a 24, 26% rate of return. You can double your money every three years. So that's gonna speed up this snowballing compound growth effect. Uh, and then the last one is time. If you guys have enough time, you can make what seem like the, the meager, the measliest rates of return, turn a small amount of money into an enormous amount of money. So this is why, I mean, this start young, right? The younger you can start investing, the longer your runway, okay? Uh, rate of return, this is why we need to be educating ourselves as much as possible on how to invest. So understanding, you know, the returns you get from real estate, different kinds of real estate, stock market, different strategies in the stock market. Understanding taxes, what tax bracket are you in? What can you do to lower your tax burden? Uh, depending on what state you live in, you're gonna pay different income taxes. You know, uh, Nevada, Texas, Florida, 0% income taxes in those states. That makes a huge difference when you're talking about compounding your wealth over time. Uh, that's really going to impact your starting capital. How much do you have to contribute to your investments, right? So these are the three key factors to understand when you're talking about how to create massive wealth over time through the power of compounding. So yeah, that's it, guys. Compound Wealth Simplified. Monish Pabrai on his channel, he's got a really cool video. I'll link to it below. Um, just about how you can start the video. There's a chessboard, right? And there's a grain of rice on the first chess square. And it kind of shows it doubling. And then what you end up with if you double each time you go to the next square. It's, it's a pretty impressive video. We don't think in terms of geometric growth as humans. We think very linearly, right? So it really takes some, some practice thinking about, okay, what does it mean to double every certain number of years to really understand this power of compounding? It's not, it's not readily intuitive. All right. Yeah, so that, that's what I wanted to cover. Compound wealth simplified. Hit that subscribe button, guys, if you haven't done so already, and I'll see you in the next video.